Hey YouTube, it's Erin and I am the Handbag Housewife and I'm back again with another video. I am getting over a dreaded illness that I caught whenever I was on my trip or on the way back. It started, I think on Saturday, the last video I put out and I can't hear out of this ear and I'm a little froggy in the throat, but we're gonna try to do this and make it work. So the start of this video, I'm gonna show you just a snippet from the airplane ride and how the tote bag worked for me as a carry-on. So I did take the handbag heels off of it. So this was my personal item and I had to cram it under the seat. And this is what it looks like after being traveled to Rome and back and set on many floors. And I feel like that looks pretty darn good considering that it was on a lot of ground without any protection. And so I think this color is a pretty good palette for not showing the dirt. And I do think I could, I haven't done it yet, but I probably should spray the bottom with Lysol to just kind of disinfect it, but I'm not too worried about it at this point. The zoom on the insert worked fabulous for it. I used all the pockets and I bought so many souvenirs that I had this thing piled up a little bit over the top on the way home to keep the weight of my rolling carry on down, which was limited at 18 pounds. So I crammed the heavy stuff in here. And then once I made it through security, I kind of switched things back. So it did work great. And the other bag that I used the heck out of on the trip when I was touring was my black Lululemon Everywhere belt bag. And this is the, I can't remember the name of this color, kind of like a bronzy color. I think I only wore this one once, but this bag, this style of bag is the most amazing bag for when you are traveling. You can put the zippers all on this side and that includes this back zipper as well so when you're wearing it crossbody you can hold your hand right here and you're protecting all of the openings of the bag this top one and this back one and i was able to put a bottle of water in kind of diagonally and even get it to close once I'd taken a couple drinks out of the water and I could crunch it just a tiny bit. So I highly recommend these everywhere belt bags as well as the large tote bag for travel. And I will link both of those below so I mean I can find them. I did want to show you how the Marc Jacobs the tote bag fits. So it does fit this way under the seat in front of me. Can it prove it? And then you can also turn it that way room. Now, I couldn't bring the handbag heels from the gal's guide. They would have totally fallen off. They repositioned themselves when I had it on my lap, and this is in here really tight. I was going to carry the long shop, but I just couldn't fit all my stuff in it. So this is what I used, and it's been great. Okay, so you saw that little snippet from the plane ride, and my oh-so-swollen ankles after the plane ride we got there on a Thursday, kind of midday, and I was bound and determined to go to Louis Vuitton that day. I didn't realize I would even have an opportunity to do any sort of luxury shopping while in Rome. I didn't sleep on the plane ride at all on the way out. It was kind of horrible, but kind of wonderful in a way too, because when I eventually did go to sleep, that Thursday night in Rome, I slept a full night. And the next day I literally had virtually no jet lag. And I'm still hurting coming back last Tuesday, late night, Wednesday, early morning. And now it's almost a week later, it's Tuesday and I'm still recovering from coming back. I feel like I had jet lag for a good three days and now I've got a cold or something worse, I don't know. But anyway, harder to come back than to go, which I guess is good because vacations aren't cheap and I would rather feel good when I'm on vacation than when I'm at home. I embarked upon visiting Louis Vuitton's that Thursday and I walked about 10 miles in Rome on that day. I walked and walked and walked and walked and walked. And I went over to the biggest Louis Vuitton store in Rome and that's what you're gonna see here first. Approaching Louis Vuitton in Rome. Can't believe it. It's a beautiful area. It 
it was a haul to get to that first Louis Vuitton store and my legs were woofing and I stood for quite a while before asking to be sat down. As you can see, my spot that I sat in at the start of this conversation and while I was sitting there, I did film some of the area around me, but the film is a little grainy as I was trying to see it sort of from a distance. And what I was able to capture, I think, shows you how many capucines that they had in particular, as well as some really pretty trunks that they had and some of the oh so strange animal bags. I'm not a fan of those. If you are, that's cool, but, but I'm not a huge fan of those. Uh, when I finally did get with a sales associate, I asked about several things. I asked about keep all extra smalls. You will see that he showed me some of the exotic keep all extra smalls, which were lovely, but not what I was looking for. And when I say keep all extra small, I actually mean keep all 25. And then also I asked about speedy 20s. I asked about Pochette Matisse East West and everything I asked about, they didn't have except for, you know, variations that I wasn't looking for. And so that was very frustrating. I kind of wanted to buy something. I ended up looking at jewelry for a while and just decided that I was going to pass and maybe try my luck at that next Louis Vuitton store, which you're going to see here in just a second. Whenever I was in this particular store, once again, I asked about the keep all 25. They had orange, which I wasn't interested in, as well as that Hawaiian print one, which I wasn't interested in. The two bags that I was possibly a little interested in, but I really felt like I was trying to make something work whenever I really didn't want anything that they had was the Pochette Matisse in navy with gold hardware. I thought that was fabulous. But that said, I have a gorgeous Paris 15 East West, and I may be saying the name of that bag wrong, but from Dress Up Your Purse, the smaller version in navy with the antique gold hardware coming to me. And so whenever I looked at this Pochette Matisse in navy with gold hardware at the store and the flap was so crooked, it was just a huge turnoff. I'd rather have a bag that's 220 ish dollars that looks amazing than that 2000 plus euro bag that has just issues. The other bag I was sort of considering there was the Morel, and that's the one that's kind of the bright sunny yellow color. But honestly, I was really just trying to make something work. I think the most beautiful bag I saw there was that Capucines, and I believe it was from the Buy the Pool collection, and it had the gorgeous LV logo in the front in that Buy the Pool print. The next place I went was to Fendi, and I have a couple of pictures that I'm showing you now of the building and the building next to it and this cool tree that they had made out of metal. I walked into Fendi. I tried on the midi chain baguette in the Zucker print. I liked it. I asked the price. It was too high for me, and I basically just walked right back out. So I didn't take any pictures of me with the bag or anything like that. But Fendi doesn't really hold its resale value, and so the price that they had was, in my opinion, too high. I feel the same way about Gucci over there. And Louis Vuitton, you can save about 30%, but that's assuming you can find something that you love. And when I say about 30%, I'm talking about if you live in the United States and you do the VAT refund, and then you don't get hit with taxes when you come into the States, which luckily I didn't, but that's not always the case. So as I was shopping, I kind of walked by the Spanish Steps a couple times, hence this photograph. But the next day, we actually had a tour set up where we went inside the Colosseum and learned a lot about it. It was super cool. And it is an amazing place to visit in Rome. Make sure if you go there, you don't miss going inside. The first two times I was in Rome, I didn't go inside and that was a mistake. I had seen the Spanish steps before. You can definitely miss those in favor of the Colosseum. And from the Colosseum, we also saw Palatine or Palatine Hill, which is a big old palace that kind of was up on the hill that looked 
over the Colosseum or look down at the Colosseum. And so I just wanted to share a few of my photographs here. After we did that tour, I went shopping again. We walked over to the Trevi Fountain and I saw a sign that indicated that I think it was Dior was nearby. So I followed the signs and I made it to this mall that had Dior and Chloe and Gucci and Louis Vuitton and even Marc Jacobs. So I'm gonna take you there now. So pretty. Raffia tote there. Metallic and shimmery. That is so pretty. It's almost like a patent finish. These are like little mini book bags and they have a strap. They are teeny tiny. The leather ones look bigger than the canvas one to me, but I bet it stretches. New bags from Chloe. I haven't seen. Looks like this is the back of them. I've never seen one of these in person. I look at them all the time online. Just wish they had a zipper. So I had discovered this mall and I found Prada. And to be frank, I probably wouldn't purchase anything from any of these stores except for Louis Vuitton because a lot of them have outlets, a lot of them don't have good resale values so you can pick them up cheaper at home. And I don't really want to buy something abroad that I could get cheaper at home. I know there's something to the experience of it. And if I had found the right Louis Vuitton bag, I definitely would have considered it. But I did want to go ahead and take you into Prada because this is the one luxury store where I I did make a purchase. So we took a little side trip on the way to the Pantheon to go to Prada. Just to see what they have. The um, re-edition was 1900 here, Euro. So in that snippet I just showed you at Prada, you did get a glimpse of what I bought. So when I came home from this trip, I had bought enough stuff that I was overweight on my baggage. And so I condensed and eliminated, and I eliminated all the packaging that I could. And so I didn't bring home any packaging for this Prada thing that I bought. And that's okay because I actually have packaging from this Prada thing that was given to me by my sales associate at Prada and turned me on to the fact that they have card holders that have seven slots. So this is my favorite configuration of card holders because it has one, two, three, one in the middle, and then one, two, three. I love other card holders. I have like my Saint Laurent one, my Gucci Garden one, that have the two slots with one in the middle and two on the back. But since I got this one, I was sort of on a mission to find another one because I use this one nonstop. So I got this Fendi one when I was in Hawaii and I really like it too. It's a beautiful shade of green. It has, I think this is the diamonds configuration for their logo. And so I really don't need any more card holders, right? Wrong. So this is the luxury reveal for the trip. And when I saw it, it like spoke to me. It called my name and that would be this Prada card holder. And again, same exact configuration. It's a pale pink and it has these beautiful blue flowers on it. I have a little hardware protector for it. I think from Have Deluxe, I'm gonna put on there if I can find it. But I just thought this was gorgeous. And I think it ended up costing me around 330 euro after the refund, but I may be wrong. I can't remember. So there's a VAT refund that I got for this. And with some of the stores, you actually have to go and enter all your information into the Global Blue kiosk. And that's what I did with this. There was a Global Blue kiosk in the basement of the store I was in, the department store. And my sales associate walked me down there and they kind of partially entered the information for me because my finger wasn't pushing the buttons very well and it was taking a while. And so then I got a printout from them and I also, he gave me, I think an envelope to mail it in. 
And when I got to the VAT office in the airport, I discovered that since this purchase was made in Italy and I was flying out of Italy, I didn't even have to get the custom stamp. I just had to go through the global blue line and they put it in and my refund, my VAT refund for all my Italian purchases because I flew out of Italy was to be processed just automatically without even getting a custom stamp. I did have a couple purchases that I made in Greece that I'm going to get to and I haven't showed you yet. And I had to mail the form in for those. And so I'm just crossing my fingers as go through because one of those was my big purchase, which I haven't showed you yet. I had a few purchases that were bigger than this one, but the very biggest one was purchased in Athens and I'll cover Athens in a different video. And I'm just hoping that nothing goes wrong with that particular refund. So this is the little cutie that I picked up at Prada and I'm going to show you a little bit more footage. I almost picked up an item from Louis Vuitton. I'm going to tell you why I didn't when we get there. Before I went to Louis Vuitton, I ran over to the Pantheon. It was like 0.4 miles away. It seemed like everything was 0.4 miles away. But the Pantheon is a church that's still used in Rome and it hasn't been stripped of all of its marble. The Colosseum used to be completely in marble and it was stripped to build almost all the churches that the Vatican has throughout Rome. And so, the Pantheon is still intact and it is so super old. It's a very, very cool building. So while everybody else headed off to eat or to rest, I went back to the mall again to see Louis Vuitton there. And that was actually my favorite Louis Vuitton. It was the smallest one, but I felt like I had the best experience there out of the three stores that I visited in Rome. Headed to the third Louis Vuitton. Actually enough, they have Marc Jacobs here, but that's an American brand. I'm not even gonna look. This store has better selection than the big ones. There are definitely some cool things to see. Snack here is definitely tempting. It's so pretty. Some exotics. These are beautiful. It's color. Capucine added color. Yeah. This is a men's trunk. It's pretty cute. Okay, let me try on the multi pressure accessory strap with the East West. I'm getting worn out. If you are still with me, please leave me a star down in the comments so I know that I have some people with me. But this third Louis Vuitton store, I liked it the best. You could just walk in. You didn't have to wait outside in blistering heat to get inside and then be, you know, offered multiple things that you didn't want. They weren't as pushy. And I felt like that was something that happened with the other two stores is that they wanted me to buy something so bad that they were trying to get me to buy things that I didn't want because they didn't have what I did want. So I almost bought the pink Pochette Matisse East West that I showed at the end of that little collage of videos. I had agreed to buy it. I was looking at it. I was like, just let me look one more time. And I found a defect in the paint up by the handle. And I wish I could show it to you. I didn't take a picture, but it looked like a cut in the leather. And I told her, I said, I'm gonna buy this if this is not a cut in the in the finish and she said well let me take it to the back and try to clean it and she did and she came back and it was still there because it was like literally a cut in the leather so i didn't buy that bag and honestly i'm so glad that i didn't because i found such amazing souvenirs on our cruise and again my biggest purchase i haven't even showed you yet and so i I'm glad I didn't buy that because I have a feeling that I'll be able to buy that at some point in the future, like either through 24S or through Fashion File if I really want it. And honestly, that wasn't my first choice anyway of things that I wanted to find when I was in Rome. So I also was looking at a chain charm that I had never seen before. And I'm going to show you that here. So I tried the chain charm, the men's chain charm on the key ball, and I went ahead and tried it on the back side because I didn't want to mess with removing the luggage tag, and I wanted to see how it would look without a luggage tag. And so I was sort of considering that. I just wanted to buy something, but 
it just didn't look the best. It wasn't what I wanted. So I didn't end up buying that. Now we are going to move into the final phase of this video, the last shopping trip of the entire trip that I had to Europe. To round out the trip, you better believe I did some luxury shopping at the airport in Rome. There were several luxury stores there, but I only went to one because I felt like I had sort of missed out on going to Gucci while I was in Italy, and that is where Gucci started. I will show you some of the exteriors of the buildings in later videos, but there were lines and I just couldn't get in. So I went to the Gucci store in Rome, and I they had pretty much the normal stuff, but there was a couple of bags that I hadn't seen before in the Marmont line, and I really don't like them. They have these weird cargo pockets on them. They weren't for me. And then there was also one that sort of reminded me of the Coach Swing Zip, and that one was okay. It, it wasn't my favorite or anything like that, but I thought I would show you these bags, and you'll have to let me know what you think. So that wraps up the luxury shopping that I did while in Rome. I visited a slew of places and it was wonderful and not wonderful at the same time because it was exhausting and I felt like I didn't accomplish much. Although I do absolutely love this Prada card holder I picked up and I felt like it kind of made all the suffering that I endured walking everywhere. It made it worthwhile because I got something good out of the deal. So if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Stay tuned for more of these videos because we were there over two weeks or around two weeks. And so I have not yet showed you some Greece videos. I haven't showed you some stuff with Malta. I haven't showed you France yet. So stay tuned. There's lots of good content headed your way. And if you haven't found me on Instagram, I do also post the links to the videos in my stories. The name there is the same as the at symbol, then the handbag housewife. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Do it and ring the notification bell. That way you'll be notified here on YouTube of future exciting content. If you want to reach out to me by email, you can definitely do so. My email is super simple. It's the handbaghousewife at gmail.com. If I don't hear from you, I will see you again real soon. Take care and have a fabulous day. Bye.